no matter what may come our way yes, Lord. our life is in your hands yes lord our life is in your hands and we declare that this is a year of favor and restoration Amen. and so we thank you for being in absolute control yes. lord we thank you for your spirit that is with us we thank you for the breakthroughs that are ours. We thank you for the victory that we are already experiencing. If you believe it, put your hands together for the King. Amen. Hallelujah. If you believe the victory is already yours, give the Lord a shout of praise. Father, we bless you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, the word of God is quick and powerful. It will set me free and give me victory. So I will open my heart and I will say the word. If you believe it, put your hands together. Amen? Now, this is the last day of the fast. I know we've been dragging, but we have to be energetic. Let me try it again. <laughs> Are we ready for the word? Are we excited about the word? Put your hands together for the king. Amen? He is worthy of praise. And so, Father, I testify that Jesus heals and Jesus saves, and I thank you for the privilege to preach your word again. Lord, please stretch forth your hand to heal and to save, comfort the afflicted, and encourage the weak. Holy Spirit, please rest upon me as I lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord another wonderful clap of him? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're not going to respond, I'm not going to preach. Give the Lord a wonderful clap of his word, amen. Okay, you may be seated, please. Can we check the microphone, please? Thank you, Jesus. We are concluding. Uh, let's get the microphone working right, please. We are concluding our 21 days uh, of fasting today. Are we happy? Okay, so we've been uh, fasting from, from physical food, but we've been feasting on spiritual food. Amen? Every night the Lord has been just uh, blessing us with uh, food from the Spirit, straight from heaven. Now, many of us are wondering what God has for our situations. What is God up to? The Holy Spirit has an answer for us. The answer is this. God is beyond understanding. We can't understand all that God is doing, but God is up to something good, amen? And so be expected. Our text is Ecclesiastes 11.5. The Bible says, As you do not know the path of the wind, or the way a body is formed in the mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. As you do not know the path of the wind or the way a body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. So there's a mystery about conception and there's a mystery about the wind. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, uh, Jesus said, the wind blows where it pleases. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it is going. And so, there is a mystery about the wind. Similarly, there's a mystery about the way a baby is formed. A man and a woman uh, come together and the baby is formed. This morning, we are celebrating the birth of another baby in the child. Very mysterious. The organs are developed and the bones are, are formed and the senses develop, and then nine months later, a beautiful child is born ready to pay some taxes to the IRS. Just incredible. There, there's a mystery about these elements of creation. The path of the wind is mysterious, and the process of conception is mysterious. But the Bible is saying not only is creation mysterious, but even more importantly, the God of creation, the God who creates what we see, there is a mystery about the way he works. And so, as you do not know the path of the wind or the way a, a body is formed in the mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Certain aspects of God's workings defy explanation. 
the human mind can simply not understand it. That's why the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children. Now, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that uh, God uh, took him into the divine realm and God showed him things that human beings are not even permitted to tell. But God wanted Paul to see some of those things and then to even write about some of the things, but he saw things that human beings are not permitted to tell. So there are things that we can never understand. And in fact, the Bible says that to keep Paul from becoming conceited or becoming proud because of the things that he saw, God sent an angel of the enemy, a messenger of Satan, to torment him. But Jesus said to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, there's a domain of divine operation that humans are not privy to. And that is why we can only relate to God by faith. We can only relate to God by faith. So the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because we can't understand everything God does and the way he works, we can only work with God uh, by faith. There's a story in the book of Judges, and this is a story about how uh, an angel, the angel of the Lord, appeared to, to a man called Manoah, and then he said to him that, you and your barren wife are going to have a child, and God is going to bless you with that child. And they named the child uh, Samson. Now, the Bible says in Judges 13, if you look at verse 17, the Bible says, Manoah inquired of the angel of the Lord, what is your name? So that we may honor you when your word comes true. What, what is your name? You have given us this promise, but please tell us your name because we want to honor you when this promise comes to pass. And he replied, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. My name is beyond understanding. You see, God's name and the way God works is beyond human understanding. As you do not know the path of the wind or the way a body is formed in a mother's womb so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Now, there are two things that I, I want to talk about uh, as we bring uh, our fasting to a close and, and as we continue to seek the face of the Lord. Number one, God is beyond understanding. God is beyond understanding. We can't always figure him out, but he's definitely at work. And number two, because God is beyond understanding, we must walk with him by faith and not by sight. We mustn't go, we must not go by what we've seen, what we see, we must go by the unseen. God is beyond understanding. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12 says, now we see things imperfectly. We see things imperfectly as in a mirror, as in a poor mirror. But then we'll see everything with perfect clarity. And so right now, as we live our lives and we are relating to God and all that, it doesn't matter how much spiritual understanding we have. The Bible says everything we see in imperf is imperfect. We see things imperfectly, but the time is coming when we'll see things with perfect clarity. And so the apostle goes on to say, all that I know now is partial and incomplete. This great apostle who was used so mightily by God is saying to us, all that I know now is impartial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely just as God knows me. And I think that's exciting. One day, you understand why God did not allow you to marry that man or that woman. One day, you understand why God did not allow you to receive that promotion on the job, even though you desperately prayed for that promotion. Well, one day you understand why God took you out of that particular job when you thought that was your dream job. One day you understand why God delayed that particular request that you asked of him. He didn't delay it. He, he didn't deny it. He, 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 he fulfilled it at the right time. One day you understand why God allowed certain things to happen the way they did. You see, you might not understand 
what God is up to. But, but if your life is to stay purposeful and your life is to stay meaningful, then there are two things that you must do. Number one, you have to trust God steadily. If your life is to stay purposeful as a Christian and meaningful as a Christian, two things. Number one, you have to trust God steadily, no matter which way the wind blows. You know, don't let your Christianity be a matter of, of, of convenience. Let your faith in God be a matter of conviction. And so you don't trust God just because things are going well and then you praise him and lift up your hands and all that. But trust him even when you don't understand. Let it be a conviction deep within you because you know who you are and you know the God you are serving. Second, have unshakable faith that God will come through no matter what. Even if everything seems to be falling apart, have unshakable faith in this creator God because he knows what he's doing. Always keep this truth in mind. God knows what he's doing. Now, I, 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 I like uh, to compare uh, the way God works with the way a seamstress would sew a garment. My mom was a seamstress, and so uh, I, 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 know, I, I think I have a good understanding uh, of uh, what that, that is involved. And uh, a few months ago, I also visited um, a studio of one of our members. She has a studio, and they make excellent garments. And you know, I had the privilege to, to go there. And you know, I, I was just impressed by what, what, what I saw in that studio. The process of, of sewing a garment, an outfit, is not pretty. There's some cutting and uh, there's some pasting and there's some, some stitching. And a piece of cloth will be taken. And then to design a particular outfit out of it, the, the seamstress will cut out the patterns and stitch some things and all kinds of things. The process is not pretty, but the end result is beautiful in the hands of an expert. Amen? The result is elegant. And, and let me just, Deacon, would you come? Let me just uh, borrow your coat for a minute. I'm talking about the way, no, you can stay right here. Let, let me just um, you know, borrow your coat for a minute. You don't mind, do you? Okay. So, so here's, here's a piece of outfit. Doesn't that look beautiful? Put it on in the seat. <laughs> Sorry about that, Deacon. But, but, but come right here. Isn't that a beautiful coat? I mean, look, yeah, put, put your hands together for the Lord. Okay, now, Deacon, uh, let me borrow your coat for a minute. You've seen the outside, right? Okay, look at the inside. Is it as beautiful as the outside? Not quite. Do you see a label there? Do you see all the passing and the stitching and all that? Okay, now put it on. How does it look on the outside? Beautiful. Would you rather he wore the inside out or the outside? Outside. Listen, this is exactly the way God works. There's some stitching, there's some patching, all kinds of things are happening on the inside. It might not look pretty, but when God is done, this is the end result. It looks beautiful. Hold on because God is at work in your life. Amen? God is not finished with you. He's at work in your life. He knows exactly what he's doing. That is exactly how God works. He casts behind the scenes. He pays things behind the scenes. But the end result is always beautiful. And so hold on, because God is up to something beautiful in your life. If you believe it, put your hands together for his worthy. Amen? Our God is at work. The righteous man Job went through sufferings that neither he nor anybody else understood. He didn't think he deserved that. He went through all kinds of challenges. In one day, you know the story, uh, Job lost all his possessions and he lost his entire family. Now, see, if that was not enough, God allowed Satan to, to attack Job. And the Bible says that Satan attacked Job with sickness because he said, listen, God, 
Satan is still standing after all these trials because he still has his health. And then he said to God, a man will do anything in exchange for his life, for his health. And so just let me attack him and see if Job will not curse you and turn his back on you. And so Satan attacked Job with a sickness that caused him to have balls all over his body. And then the Bible tells us in Job chapter 2, listen to verse 9. The Bible says, Job took a broken piece of pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? And then in chapter 3, verse 25, Job complained. Job said, what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I never expected this. I'm a righteous man. I've been serving God faithfully. Why has all this happened to me? I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest but only turmoil. And so Job felt alienated from God. And so he said in Job 23, listen to verse 4, if only I knew where to find God, if only I could go to his dwelling, I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. That's how I feel sometimes. Sometimes when things are, are in an upheaval, you, you just wonder and say, Lord, if only you will listen to me. If only we could have a talk. Where is God when nothing seems to be working? Where is God when, when people are laughing behind my back? You see, nothing has more than the apparent absence of God when life is challenging. Where are you, God? We ask. How long, Lord? How many more interviews before I finally get the job? How long do I have to wait before I see this financial breakthrough? Lord, how many doctor visits do I have to, to make before I receive my healing? Lord, when is this child of mine ever going to turn around? I've been praying and crying out unto you for years. Lord, when is that husband coming? When, when is that wife coming? How long? How long, Lord? How long? Father, how long? How long will I keep praying audaciously before I hear from you? Now, please hear me carefully, church. In your puzzlement, as you try to figure things out, or even your frustration, don't walk away from God. Chat endlessly with God about your situation. Take a walk with the Holy Spirit and let him feel, let him know how you feel. Talk to God earnestly, but don't walk away from God because God is faithful, amen? He's your father. And so talk to him, but don't ever give up on God. Like Job, let your response be, listen to Job's response when he was going through all that. Job 23 verse 9, Job said, when he's at work in the north, I do not see him. I look up north and I don't see God. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But in spite of the fact that I don't see him in the north, I don't see him in the south, in spite of that, he knows the way that I take. And after he has tested me, I will come forth as God. I don't see him in the north. I don't see him in the south, but there's one thing I know. Even though I don't see what is going on, I don't understand it, there's one thing I know. After I've gone through this test, I'm going to come forth as gold. My feet, verse 11, my feet have closely followed his steps. I've kept to his way without turning aside. I don't see him, but I'm going to walk obediently by faith according to his word because I know he's up to something good. Amen? You see, what Job did not know, that, what he didn't know was that, that there's a limit to what God was allowing Satan to do. Ultimately, Job was going to be blessed with twice as much as he had before. There was going to be restoration. Listen, God will restore and favor you. Your suffering has a limit. God is not a destroyer. God is a builder. God is not a, a taker, God is a giver. If God allows a seed to die, 
Is it simply because out of the death of that seed, a lot of fruit is going to come out? It, both in the natural and the spiritual, there's always death preceding life. You do not know what is going on in heaven concerning your life. And so, like the psalmist in Psalm 42 and verse 3, you might be saying, My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me, all day long, where is your God? Where is your God? Listen, don't give up. God will come through. Something good is going to happen, amen? God will lift you up. And so look ahead with confidence. Encourage yourself with these words from Isaiah 16. Listen to verse 15. Although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through you, although you seem as though you've been rejected, no one traveling through you, I will make you the everlasting pride and glory of all nations. I will make you the everlasting pride and glory of all nations. Can somebody receive it with a wonderful clap of an amen? God says, I will make you the everlasting pride and glory of all nations. Look at verse 17. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of bronze, I'm going to bring you gold and I'm going to bring you silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. In other words, everything about you is going to be upgraded. Listen, you might not understand what God is doing in your life, but God knows what he's doing. He's turning your bronze into gold. He's turning your iron into silver. God is not destroying you. He's simply preparing you for an upgrade and a promotion. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 8, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And the Bible is full of illustrations about how the ways of God defy human understanding. And so, you know, we, we consistently refer to the story of Abraham because he's the father of our faith. God called Abraham at the age of 75 and made him a promise that he was going to be the father of many nations. But you know the story, for 25 years, Abraham kept waiting and waiting and waiting before Isaac was born. Now the question is, why did God wait for so long before fulfilling that, that promise? 25 years before Isaac was born. Now, interestingly, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, also experienced barrenness before giving birth to the twins, Jacob and Esau. And then Jacob's wife, Rachel, was also barren for a while before giving birth to, to, to Benjamin and then to Joseph. Now, how do you explain this chain of, of barrenness in the family tree of Abraham, who was supposed to be the father of many nations? Why did God allow that? You see, we can't always understand why God allows certain things to happen or disallows certain things from happening. No prophet can explain that to you. That is God's sovereign domain. You know, sometimes we, we run into trouble because we, we want to understand everything. Listen, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and our children. And so we have to just trust the Lord. How about Joseph? How in the world would you explain what, what Joseph went through? The fact that he was hated by his brothers and they put him in a pit, left him in a pit to die. The fact that he was sold uh, into slavery, uh, uh, slavery and the fact that he was lied upon by Potiphar's wife and then thrown into a prison and just left in that prison, rejected. How do you explain his life of pain and misery, although he was working righteously with God? Now listen to Joseph's explanation. When he finally came to understand why God allowed that to happen, this is what Joseph said in Genesis 50 and 20. He said, as for you, you meant evil against me, 
But God, my father, God meant it for good in order to bring about, as it is, to save many people alive. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good to save many lives, including yours. As you do not know the path of the wind or the way a body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. The divine intent did not become clear to, to Joseph until the picture had fully unfolded many years later. God's intent for your life might not become clear now, but you're going to see a move of his hand, and finally you'll understand what God is up to. Amen? And so one year before his promotion, God did not, Joseph did not know what was ahead of him. I mean, think about it. A whole year before, he didn't know. A month before his promotion, he had no idea. A week before God promoted him out of that prison, he had no idea. A day before, he had no idea. Even an hour or a minute before, he had no idea. But suddenly, when the time came, God miraculously took him out of that prison because the prison was not his destination. And so, whether you understand it or not, God is always working things out for your good. Amen? Whatever pitch you find yourself in is not your end. We, we can't always understand why God allows us to experience certain trials, but we can be sure of one thing, and you hear me say this week after week after week. In the end, God always wins. If you stick long enough with God, you will win no matter how long it takes. God, God can suddenly change your situation because the Bible tells us that one day is like a thousand years in the sight of God, and a thousand years is like one day in the sight of God. Are you with me, church? Our God is more than able. If you believe it, put your hands together for the King. Amen? He's worthy. The, the test that you are going through today is going to be your testimony tomorrow. Are you with me? This test is going to become a testimony. You know, the, the mess that you think you find yourself in today is going to be a, a message for the future that will be a blessing to many others. Out of the pain that you are going through, God is preparing a sign to be a blessing. And so as you do not know the path of the wind or the way a body is formed in a mother's womb so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. God allows things for a reason. But the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 that there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. That there's a time to plant and there's a time to uproot. Maybe the time, what you think is a time to plant in God's eyes and on his calendar is a time to uproot. And so no matter how strange and how foolish the journey might seem, always remember God never makes mistakes. Amen? Listen, if God were ever to make a mistake, the whole universe would come crashing down. He works with precision. If you allow him, he will even turn your mistakes, what you think is a mistake. If you allow God, God can turn it into a marvelous story of grace. Because his plans are for your good, never for your evil. So don't believe anything to the contrary. The enemy wants you to doubt God. Don't, don't believe the enemy. He has nothing good to offer. When, when things seem to be dragging and, and you feel tired and you feel weak, wait upon the Lord and renew your strength. Just wait on the Lord. And so the psalmist says in Psalm 5 and verse 3, he says, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, O Lord, I lay my request before you, and then I wait in expectation. Lord, I don't understand everything, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting in expectation. It is not easy, Lord, to, to deal with this emotional pain, but I'm waiting in expectation. Lord, this sickness is a struggle, but I'm waiting in expectation because I know you are the Lord God who heals. Lord, I do not understand this loss, but I'm waiting in expectation because I know you favor me and you bring restoration. Lord, I don't understand uh, this trial, but I'm waiting because I know you bring me through. Lord, 
Your ways are beyond understanding. But, but I trust you. I trust you because you are infallible. You, you don't make any mistakes. I trust you because you're omniscient. You know everything. I, I trust you because you're omnipotent. You are all-powerful. I trust you because you are a gracious God. You are loving. You are kind. You are merciful. I trust you because you are sovereign. No one controls you. Everything is under your control. I trust you because you are a good, good, good father. And so hold on, child of God. I believe there's a sound of abundant rain coming. Amen? The drought will come to an end. Showers of blessing are on the way. If you believe it, put your hands together for the king. Amen? Listen. It might look like a tiny cloud right now, but hold on. Hold on because I hear the sound of healing, amen? Hold on because I hear the sound of jobs and businesses. Hold on because I hear the sound of marriage bells, amen? I hear chains breaking, amen? I hear the sound of salvation. I hear addicts being set free. I hear the grounds for the campus being broken, amen? I hear thousands gathered in worship, amen? I hear prayer going forth for the nations. I hear the sound of revival. I hear the sound of favor. And I hear the sound of restoration. Because our God will restore and our God will multiply. And so let's hold on. We will see the glory of the living God. If you believe it, put your hands together for the King, amen? He's worthy, amen? Let's conclude with the second point. Uh, Walk by faith uh, and not by sight. You can't always understand the workings of God. Uh, And so you have to walk by faith, not by sight. You, You have to look beyond the visible to the unseen. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't believe because we see in the physical. We believe because we know that God has already worked it out and made the supply available spiritually. And it's only a matter of time before the manifestation takes place for us to see physically. Faith means we take God at his word. No more and no less. God, what you said is true because you are true. And so I take you at your word. That's faith. And so like Shadrach and Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, we say by faith, as they said in Daniel 3 and 17, he said, if we are thrown into the fiery furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it and he will rescue us from your hands, O king. God will rescue us. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your goals or worship the image of gold that you've made. God didn't prevent Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego from being thrown into the fire. But God did not allow the fire to burn them. Listen, God will not allow the fire that is around you to consume you. He says, when you go through the fire, I'll be with you. When you go through the waters, you will not be drowned. And so hold on, child of God. Our God is faithful. God might not prevent you from a trial. But God will certainly bring you through the trial. God God might not prevent you from being thrown into the lions then, but God has the power to shut the mouth of the lions. God will favor you. God will restore you. Can I have a witness in the house? Amen? There will be favor and there will be restoration. God has a plan for your life. Now, you might not understand all the ways uh, through which he might accomplish uh, those plans. You might not understand how he's going to bring about that favor and that restoration. Now, some might say uh, maybe the reason why you are experiencing all these difficulties is because you are not praying enough. Or, or maybe uh, it's because there's sin in, in your life. Or maybe it's because you don't have faith. Listen, don't worry about what people are saying. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Look beyond the short term to the long term. Because God is a long term God. He's not a short term God. 
One day, the Bible says, it's like a thousand years in the sight. In a thousand years, it's like one day. So look beyond the short-term things that you are seeing and look at the long-term plans of God for your life. And so as you do not know the, the path of the wind or the way a body is formed the mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Now let me close uh, with this uh, true story. This is a story of a man called uh, Robert Bruce. And this man found himself in a, a terrible battle uh, during uh, the Scottish Reformation. This was for, in the 14th century. Now, uh, the battle, battle became fierce, and you know, he was retreating. And so he started running off from the pursuing soldiers. And after a hot chase, he found a cave, and so he decided to run into the cave. And so he ran into the cave, and then he started praying, Lord, please help me, save me, have mercy on me, protect me from you know, these uh, soldiers who are after my life. And then as he was praying quietly, suddenly he saw, saw a spider weaving a web at the entrance to the cave. Just like that. That's not our God is real. And so he saw the spider weaving a web at the entrance of the cave and suddenly uh, the, the whole entrance was covered with the web of the spider. And so he said to himself, I pray to God for protection and safety. How in the world is the spider going to save me? And so he was in there. And then very soon, he heard footsteps of the enemy soldiers pursuing. And then he heard one of them say, when they, they came to the edge of the, the, the entrance of the cave, uh, the, the soldier leading the troops looked at it and said, it's impossible for anyone to be in this cave because that person would have had to break the web to enter that cave. And so let's just leave. And so they left. Years later, this man, Robert Bruce, uh, wrote uh, in, in the book that he wrote later on. He said, where God is, a spider's web, it's like a stone wall. But where God is not, a stone wall is like a spider's web. As you do not know the path of the wind or the way a body is formed in the mother's womb so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. There are times when you might ask God for a stone wall, but instead he might send you a spider. Don't go killing the spiders around you. They might be sent from God. Amen? God knows what he's doing. In the end, he'll work everything out for your good. And so, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding, as the Bible tells us. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path. God is going to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that you're asking or thinking, according to his power, that's at work in you. That's at work in me. God is beyond understanding. But if we sit long enough with him, his plans for us will unfold and to be a glorious ending. Shall we say thank you, Jesus? Let's rise up, church, and let's go into...